Right. We are now more or less uh, on uh, camera. So uh, I will, uh, of course, uh, first talk about why I have decided to include uh, Bomkesh of Baroda. Not only because it offers us a perspective of uh, Bomkesh's detective skills, but also because this is the one of the few stories where the detective story comes into direct uh, contact with the ghost story. And why is the ghost story so very important for us? You see, if the detective believes in logic and that everything can be explained through reason alone, that there are clues through which and, and uh, conjecture based on which the truth can be arrived at, then the ghost story presents a binary to the detective story. It suggests that there are many truths which are not accessible by reason. And these truths can be only explained through the paranormal or the mystical way. So the ghost is the binary, as it were, of the detective who cannot be explained by reason and whose very existence is predicated on the phenomenon of unreason, irrationality, as it were. Therefore, what happens, you know, when the discourses of detective fiction come into contact with the discourses of the ghost story? This is what this lecture will try to probe. Now, I will, of course, remind you that there is one more uh, story where the paranormal enters into detective fiction, and that is Shoilo Rahosho, where uh, which I will briefly take up at the end of this discussion. I would also like to remind you, as I have done earlier, that Sharadindu was one of the few people who actually experimented with both these forms. Uh, in fact, the two characters here, Bomkish and Boroda, are both, you know, uh, both have a series of stories to their own. So Boroda has a series of ghost stories. Bunkish has a series of detective stories. In that sense, you know, they are quite well defined as characters and subject positions in terms of the genres that they present, the ghost story and the detective story. Now, I would also remind you that Chorodindu was not the first to talk about both the ghost and the detective, you know, uh, Arthur Conan Doyle experimented with the occult, wrote ghost stories, but there are no stories actually in the Sherlock Holmes stories where you have a ghost, apart from, you know, a text like The Hound of Bas the Baskervilles, where you have this mythical, legendary uh, hound, which uh, for generations has been feeding or cursing the Baskerville family. So in, even in Conan Doyle, the rational detective arrives to dissipate the myth of the ghost, right? Therefore, in the detective story, the presence of the ghost is not allowed. It is a puzzle which has to be rationally solved. And the genre of the detective story will automatically trans, uh, a sort of triumph over the genre of the ghost story. These are my initial remarks. Now, therefore, let us think in terms of the let us think in terms of the center periphery binary. If the detective story is at the center, then the ghost story is at the binary, right? It it has to be on the fringes. So reason at the center, the paranormal or the mysterious in the periphery. Now, you see how very interesting Shorodindu creates an actual spatial binary. The detective from Kolkata, that is Bumkesh Bokshi, traveled to the fringes, the outskirts of Bengal, that is Bihar, 
in Munger, right? So the non-metropolitan area, which is seen as a site of superstition and unreason, gets the light of reason from metropolitan Calcutta so that the detectives, uh, the detective brings light, enlightenment, rationality to superstition and mystery in Munger. So you can say that if the detective story is a colonial form, then it brings the force of colonization and triumph onto the pre-colonial mystical form of the or uh, the irrational form of the ghost story. So in many ways, these interactions take place in uh, this text. Right. OK. Now let us take a look at uh, how Boroda and Bomkish respectively are presented. So Boroda Babu, the ghost seeker. Now in the Bengali, uh, there is the use of the term Bhutan Nish. Now Bhut would be the past, right? And the detective also deals with the past, but he equally explains the present in terms of the past. So uh, in many ways, the detective deals with the present, whereas the Bhutanneshi deals with the past. So Veshidiner Kothanoy Bhutanneshi Borodababu Shohit Chottanneshi Bomkesher Akbar Shakhattar Ghotiya Chilo. So this is the encounter. It was not so very long ago that Boroda Babu, the ghost seeker, had run into Bomkesh, the truth seeker. Right. Now, those of you who study uh, ghost stories, and all of us have done so, will remember that the ghost story has its logic, has a logic of its own. You see, how does one become a ghost? One becomes a ghost if one's Atman is not released from this world. There is something which is unfulfilled, right? And therefore, the ghost comes back to haunt a place, haunt a person, so that this uh, unfulfilled uh, desire is, as it were, fulfilled, and therefore, uh, he can be liberated. Now, in a certain way, also, in the detective story, the mystery remains unfulfilled, and it is the detective story so that this mystery is fulfilled. So in many ways, although I say that they exist on two different planes, there is a search for the truth in the ghost story also. Why is the ghost acting as the ghost is acting? But you see, the philosophical premise is very different, that the detective is solely dependent on reason, and the ghost story is completely independent of reason, as it were. Uh, now, so uh, the other factor that I want to bring in here is the character of Shoshanko Babu. Shoshanko Babu is the friend of uh, Bomkesh, who is part of the police force. You see. Uh, and he is the one who calls Bomkesh to Munger for a visit, but has an insidious motive of trying to solve the crime which is committed and where the ghost is a part, that the murder uh, seems to have been committed by a ghost. So this story also talks about the the position of the detective in society, who is peripheral, I mean, say, he is on the periphery of the law. If the center of the law is the police force, which uh, is found to be incompetent, inadequate, then the detective is on the periphery, who can lend his expertise, but who is never officially acknowledged. As I point out, this is a recurrent theme in the detective story, that the detective is someone who is literary, one who exists on the fringes of the law, who abets the law, who helps the law, 
but who is never really acknowledged as the force of the law right so this is this uh, what i'll call liminal position liminal mane hocche moddhobot median or a, a marginal position somebody who exists on the margins right this liminal positionality of the detective both as an agent of law yet on the periphery of law is something which needs to be taken uh, a look at of course bonkesh is also again talking about uh, the bengali subjectivity bonkesh you remember is a very bengali detective and ajit begins by saying that during the pujas almost every bengali wants to go out and that is why they could not uh, resist the call from munge right so uh, and there's there's this question about shashanku babu's hidden motive behind his cordial invitations so in a sense both of them are uh, uh, sort of uh, are friends but not really friends they are competitors and there are two modes of investigation which are talked about one which is the police mode which is very regular which does not have any spark of intelligence versus the detectives who brings intelligence guesswork conjecture into the realm of the investigation process now ekhane we need to talk also about bonkesh talking about the shastras and the anuman khando or uh, what we will call the book of conjecture right so the detective you see he observes as observes certain phenomena in human nature from which he makes educated conjectures and guesses now conjecture is not the same as speculation right he is making an educated informed conjecture and that is what bonkesh will refer to as the anuman khando in the shastras right so the detectives craft is something which uh, charodindu is bringing into focus evidence conjecture the construction of a narrative verifiable by evidence and final denouement this is how the detective story will proceed now uh, of course uh, we are talking about the munger fort which is on the outskirts on the periphery of the city which is an enclave of the very rich as it were and uh, where you see you have uh, the residences of a handful of ordinary citizens the town the market and the actual hum human habitation were outside the fort was seemingly a sovereign upper class enclave for royals and noblemen so it's a privileged world into which bonkesh is stepping into munger now uh, then comes the cunning of shashanku babu who is the uh, the police inspector and that the real issue that uh, he is talking about because of the invitation is not only to invite his friend bonkesh but also to solve a murder right so this is the first uh, opposition that you find between bonkesh the detective and his methods versus the police and their very traditional methods of detecting crime right and then of course there comes uh, the murder the murder happens in a uh, two story house where on the ground floor the daughter lives the daughter's husband is a, was a player in the circus and a good for nothing he had uh, wasted all the money of the of the daughter uh, and uh, misbehaved with her so the daughter comes to live with the man who lives upstairs the father boykunt boykunt dash now there's a play on the word boykunt right now boykunt is ex, is a jewel merchant he uh, he has accumulated a lot of jewels and keeps them hidden and has a, a front as a kind of a jeweler uh, and runs a jewelry shop but his jewels are all stashed within his house and he lives on the first floor which is 15 foot above the ground so it's 
at a quite a terrible height and there is uh, only one window into the house into that room apart from the door and boykunto uh, is a miser right in the english version of course there's a play on mr boykunto and miser boykunto right mr versus miser in the bengali version boykunto is known also as baykunto right somebody who is once again kripon a miser right so charodindu plays on this to show how boykunto has accumulated a significant amount of money in jewelry now boykunto is married uh, i'm sorry is murdered very sorry murdered in uh, one night is found dead uh, completely strangulated within his room which was locked from inside and therefore he was murdered the murderer must have entered through the window and no jewels that he has accumulated has been found right i i'm just from the text i am referring to his name has been distorted in the process he was laughingly called miser rather than mr boykunto this is a good translation you see the way in which miser and mr and the concept of the baykunto is pushed out now uh he then talks about uh, the the oikonto babu's murder he was simple man with no premonition of the imminent mishap uh, the servant had left and the corpse was found in a sitting position its back against the wall the assailant had strangulated him to death and then escaped with all his jewels so he used to keep all his jewels apparently in a wooden box within his room the box has been found rifled there's no money and there's no jewels right uh, it was summer the window was open so the thief must have entered through the night uh, and through the window right uh, no one was allowed into his bedroom not his, even his daughter knew their whereabouts about the jewels his room didn't have a safe yet he used to keep all the diamonds and pearls and all else in his bedroom right <clears throat> and then of course what are the things that he has he has this uh, this box where you keep pan now if you remember your uh, nobody really uh, keeps pan nowadays in their homes but if you remember your grandmothers and your grandfathers they used to have something of a container for the pan and the lime which goes with it right the the jeta ke tumra chun bolte paro right so uh, the the chun was there within uh, the the box of pan and you had khair and the other ingredients for making the pan so there's one one box for pan paner bata jeta ke bola hoy within the house right within that particular room right uh, now who can have mad- uh, murdered uh, boykunt he has a friend the only friend that he had in the town was a lawyer named tarashankar babu a very wise old uh, wily w i l y wily mane hocche clever very uh, wily lawyer called tarashankar babu uh, with whom he used to play chess every sunday right so uh, this was his only friend as it were and the daughter of course says that he does not she does not know anything right uh, now this is the point that i was trying to make Uh, that bobke says i don't want to interfere with your investigation and uh, shashanko says i'm not making an official request to you but you are a fellow traveler if your your observations lead you to certain ideas you can always help me personally right so his intentions was more than willing to accept help but he was unwilling to officially give anyone else the credit and thus shared the fame right once again bonkesh is the truth seeker therefore he agrees right okay so uh, and then of course you have among the people who are the suspects for the crime you have a young man called shoilen babu who has come to uh, uh, to this place for munger was a place where you went to uh, recuperate for health reasons you have amullo who 
we find in the other Baroda stories as one of the assistants of Baroda. And you have the uh, Tarashankar Babu, who was the friend of Vaikud. Right. Therefore, now comes Baroda. The introduction to Baroda actually is a very interesting uh, introduction. Baroda Babu was rotund. So he was round, he was fat and uh, round. Once again, you will have seen that culturally we associate fatness and roundness with jollity, but we also associate it with foolishness. Right. Therefore, you have this, you know, binary that Bumkesh is very intelligent, thin and tall, whereas Boroda is round, diminutive, short, pair of skin and clean shaven. Please remember the Bengali is a little more ironic. It says Borodababur Cheharati Golgal, Bete Khato, Rong Forsta, Dari Gof Kamano, Shab Milaya. This is very interesting. Noinital Alur Kotha Sharon Koryadai. Koraiyade. Right. He reminded one of fresh potatoes. Now that is the inadequacy of translation here. The the laughter, the humor is lost in this translation. Right. Noinita Lalu. You know, in, in Bengali, if you refer to someone as Alu, you are referring to uh, him as having very little intelligence. So if the detective is presented as somebody who is very intelligent, then the ghost seeker, Bhut Bisheshaggo, is Boroda is being presented as somebody who is uh, not so intelligent at all. Now, I might just here add that what happens in the other stories of Boroda? Now, there are a number of stories. There are almost eight stories where Boroda is a character. Uh, but in many of these stories, you see, uh, there are actually there are actually mysteries rather than ghosts. Only in a story called Malkosh do we actually have the presence of the ghost. In stories like Rokto Khaddot or Tik Tiki Dim, these are stories which feature Baroda. These are mysteries, right? Mysteries, but often very comic mysteries. For example, in Tik Tiki Dim, it is the ghost of a lizard that seems to haunt Boroda, right? And uh, there are a couple of stories where, you know, the there are like Oshodiri uh, or Shobuj Choshma or Dehantor, you know, they, whether there is a ghost present, we really do not know. It might be absolutely somebody who is which is a mis mystery right uh, now one particular story needs to be talked about here and that is Prithpuri. in Prithpuri, Boroda is very afraid of a ghost which haunts a house and he sees an apparition and he faints almost only to discover that the apparition or the ghost was only a thief who has now taken his money bag and his watch. So there is always a kind of a comic dimension to uh, Sharadindu's uh, ghost stories. They generate fear, no doubt, and they create this element of mystery. But there is also a certain comic quality about Boroda, which you can obviously observe here <coughs> in his appearance. So even in terms of the appearance, Bomkesh and Boroda are binaries. But Shoilin Babu, who is very important in the story because he's the ultimate criminal, <coughs> was just the opposite, tall and thin, though you could not call him frail. So he's pretty well built, tall and thin. And remember, he is a gymnast and he uh, is a well known gymnast in the circus and he can therefore. Walk on stilts. Stilts are ronpa. Ronpa are extremely long sticks using which you can 
uh, walk very fast, right? So he's a circus player, although we do not know it right at this point of time. Boroda Babu was a local resident, uh, and uh, they talk to each other. He's also inherited uh, a property, and Shailen Babu has come here to recuperate his health. Uh, but um, Boroda keeps on suggesting that this is the work of a ghost, that Boykunto has not uh, been cremated properly, and therefore he's coming back to haunt the house. Now, Boykunto's house is now resided in by a person called Koilash Babu. Right. Uh, and the, the idea of the ghost is uh, creates a satisfaction in Boroda Babu's countenance. Boroda also wants to tell stories. Most individuals are skeptical. Therefore, Boroda Babu cheered up as though he had received an unexpected gift when Bobkesh acquiesced to a story instead of a th instead of theory. So you see, here various people are telling people are telling stories. The there is one story which is being told by the police of a murder. There's one story which is told by Boroda of a ghost. And there's another story being told by Bumkesh of a criminal. And the master storyteller, Sharodindu, is controlling all these stories together. Right. Boroda's story is quite attractive, you see, style. He did not rush through the tale. It proceeded at a stately pace. So the ghost story will not be very fast. It will gradually draw out the horror. Uh, the narration was not marred by an abundance of incidents, but the events were woven together with such expertise that the listener's attention was gradually subjugated. Very interesting that the uh, that the uh, ghost story uh, is 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 has a, a narrative uniqueness of its own. Listen to the Bengali here. Varoda babur bhungi ti besh chitta korsho. Ula huri tala huri tala tari nai. Dhir monthor tale choli ache. Ghatonar bahulle. Golpo conto kito noi. Othocho erup nipun babe gotonaguli binosto. Jesrotar monke dire dire sinkulitio korea fale. Choke drishti. O muker bungima. Amon babe golpet shoit shongot korea chole. The shop bishaya. Ekti okondo roshobus to rashat payachi. Bolia broom hoina. So Boroda is someone who tells stories with consummate skill. Right. Now, two kinds of skill. The ghost story teller is slow, but generates fear and mystery. The detective story teller is quick, and he explains the mysteries with logic. You see, two different narrative strains also come into contact in these stories. Right. So he suggests that Bob Boykunto Babu's ghost is haunting the place. Uh, it no longer belongs to a corporeal body. It cannot overcome its attachment to the physical world. It continues to haunt the spaces that it was accustomed to. So it is the soul is not liberated. Bangla jeta ke bola hai. Apo ghate mrittu. We say uh, in English it is a death by accident or by criminality. Therefore, the soul has not been uh, sort of liberated. And who is the, who has seen the ghost? The ghost has been seen by the old Koilash Babu who resides in that house. It has been seen by Boroda. And it has also, very importantly, the third person who corroborates it is Choilen Babu. Right? Choilen Babu, as it were, has seen the ghost. Therefore, three independent sources. Therefore, uh, Boroda's story of the ghost is now accepted by all and sundry. And finally, who sees the ghost? Bumkish does. Right. One night when he visits Koilash Babu, he sees the ghost. Although it's not a ghost, really. It's a man who disappears on the wrong path after, uh, after uh, showing his face. But Bumkish's evidence is, as it were, the clincher. Right. Boykunto Babu's house remained under control for the police. And then uh, 
there's this new man who has come to reside here, Koilash Chandra Mullik, quite ill and getting on in years. Now, Koilash Babu, of course, sees uh, the ghost. He sees discovered a repulsively ugly face peering at him. Koilash Babu screamed, uh, but the face had disappeared by then. Same incident was repeated on two other nights, and people thought it was Koilash Babu's imagination. But it, because it was regularly seen, uh, people started accepting it. Now, Boroda says, I have a scientific interest in ghosts and spirits. I can neither ex dismiss them as non existent nor accept their existent questioning. Right? Therefore, Boroda decides to examine it further. And uh, Koilash Babu, incidentally, is a heart patient. So uh, these events, of course, take a toll on his mind. And he welcomes uh, Boroda. And he sees uh, the, the specter, as it were. Mm. Saw the spirit for, your, for yourself, asks Bumkesh. You saw the ghost yourself. Did you recognize Poikento Babu? Varunda Babu said it was a face not very clear, but undoubtedly human. We will, of course, know that this is just a mask being used by Shoilin Babu when he is uh, visiting this house on the Ronpa, on the stilt. Right. Uh, quite extraordinary, remarks Bomkesh. Not many people are fortunate enough to see a ghost, to have seen a ghost. Right. And then Shoilan Babu also comes in. He says, uh, there, there, suddenly he shouted out, there, there, all of us turned towards the window, but nothing more could be seen. Shoilan Babu had seen a cloud of vapor gradually taking shape. Now, we will, at the end of the story, know that this is a manifestly false statement. Shoilan Babu, because he wanted to create his own alibi and who wanted to people to believe in the ghost, had actually shouted out when there was nothing in the window. But this becomes an important uh, evidence that the ghost really exists. Right. Uh, and then, of course, Bogesh says, what is the daughter's point of view? The daughter's point of view uh, is, is uh, and Bogesh wants to meet the daughter. And Tarashankar Babu uh, promises that he will uh, accept. Right. Uh, and then Baruda Babu, uh, Tarashankar Babu was not a bad sort, but no other lawyer in the district could match him on sharpness of intellect. So he's a very intelligent man. And then comes a very interesting passage. Right. When Bomkesh meets Tarashankar Babu, this is something which I want to read with all of you. Uh, uh, he says, I am a seeker of the truth, said Bomkesh, greeting him courteously. Boroda Babu Shonkuchito Bhabe Bomkesh Purichoy Dilen, Bomkesh Binitu Bhabe Nomoshkar Korea Bolilo, Ami Ajun Shotanish. I am a seeker of truth. And then Boroda uh, Tarashankar Babu asks, Seeker of truth? And what might that be? Shotanish, Shetaki. Seeking the truth is my profession, just as the law is yours. Uh, so the detective is here presenting himself as a professional, somebody who seeks the truth as a profession for fees. Bomkesh Bokshi. Right. Now, and then he says, Oh, Ajkal, detective Kothata Buji are fashion name. So you, the word detective is no longer in fashion then. What do you seek? Truth. What kind of truth? And then Bomkesh throws an arrow of the guess. Right. For instance, how much money Boykunto Babu had left with you? And then Tarashankar Babu immediately is impressed. He says, How do I you know that Boykunto had left money with me? And he says, uh, you know. How can anyone believe that a wealthy businessman like Boykunto Babu would leave behind no cash, and yet there was no money in his bank account? He was probably suspicious of institutions like banks. Remember, in those times, banks used to fail very often. 
they were not nationalized then where did he keep his money almost certainly with a trusted friend right therefore this is the surmise the educated guess based on evidence that the detective makes this is his way of using the little gray cells to quote Hercule Poirot and this is the way in which he arrives at the truth but since Bumkesh Babu has discovered the truth I have no choice but to admit it right so uh, and he says Boykunto kept his money so that you know the son-in-law could not access it the son-in-law travels the country with a circus troop so this is the first time that Bomkesh gets to know that the son-in-law has been with the circus so he can ride a Ronpa if necessary he can ride a stilt if necessary right so uh, therefore the girl the daughter lives with Tara Shankar Babu now who is the custodian of the money that uh, Moikuntu has left for her right and then Moikuntu's uh, daughter comes in and is interviewed and she responds only with yes or no tells her that uh, tells Bomkesh that she had been married and that there's nobody in the family and he does she does not know where the husband is right therefore there is a complete un lack of response and of course there's also this fact that she does not want to go to Goya to give Pindu which is the sacrificing ceremony or the ceremony where you offer you know uh, food to the departed soul so that uh, that soul is liberated right so uh, this is what the uh, encounter with Tara Shankar Babu is next encounter as it were takes place with Koilash Babu and Bumkesh looks at the window says it's about 15 feet from the ground incredible so obviously how the thief has entered or the murderer has entered the room is something which is very very uh, crucial right so Tara Shankar Babu, uh, Koilash Babu of course blames the other person whom he blames is his son who with a tantric is creating uh, a tantra so that you know Koilash Babu dies early so he believes that the son is responsible for sending gauls on him pray to him right and then suddenly Koilash Babu glances at the window and says there there and uh, there is this grotesque face all skin and bones it was yellowish white a few yellow teeth visible through parted lee, uh, lips and then uh, Bomkesh takes a look outside the window leaning out I saw there was no ladder but he sees only somebody uh, somebody walking away in the forests dark forests beyond right but Bomkesh of course will never accept the presence of a ghost because the, for the detective the ghost does not exist right and uh, therefore the story at this point of time is shrouded in great mystery and complexity next morning they explore the grounds and this is where Bomkesh finds an important clue the clue is a circus bill ash from the oven scraps of paper and it looks in beneath the surface and finds a portion of a paper where it is written you're bad uh, and asking for money it's in the uh, in the Bengali it's Tomar Shati right and here of course the bad refers to the husband and in the Bengali Shati refers to the Shami so obviously the son-in-law has been in touch with the daughter and was asking for money right but Bomkesh can't know that at this point of time right and then Bomkesh takes a look at the uh, the the walls and finds a fingerprint on the wall he looks carefully at the walls and uh, come and take a look I'm sure you haven't seen this before he spotted a clear fingerprint at a height of about five feet from the ground as though someone had applied pressure 
with their finger on the line covering the wall before it has sent, uh, before it has set. It's a thumbprint. What is its significance? Significance? You did not spot the sign left by the murderer. So now Bonkesh has already now surmised that the jewels are hidden in these walls and that uh, uh, that Boykun uh, Tobabu actually put these jewels and covered them up with lime and took them out one by one when needed. So this is the discovery that he makes and that the thumbprint that he discovers obviously is a print which is made by someone else and this had to be the murderer who had realized where Boykunto uh, had kept his jewels. Right. And then uh, he comes away uh, with the art of the footprint, uh, I'm sorry, the thumbprint sort of extracted from the wall. Right. Now, and of course, the next part takes place in uh, the club, the Bengal club, where the residents gather. And here you have the skeptics. The skeptic, for example, Amullo Babu, who is a character in the Baroda stories, who has always uh, felt that you know ghosts never existed. But now that Bonkesh had seen the ghost, all of them have to believe this. Right. Uh, and then Baroda says, I believe that Boykun Tobabu wishes to say something. It says, uh, he isn't getting the opportunity. And therefore, they believe or they try an experiment, which very few of us have seen. I don't know if any of you have. I haven't at least. But it was practiced earlier. It was called a planchet. Now, remember that even in the Tagore household, Rabindranath tried the planchet and he had invited his youngest son, Shomindro, to the planchet. So you could actually sit around a small table and the table would move. And from the moving of the table, you could converse with the ghost. This was what the planchet believed in. And Bobkesh, of course, immediately jumps at the idea of the planchet and only five people remain, Baroda, Bumkesh, Shoilen, Amullo and Ajit, right? And then uh, they ask whether the ghost wants to talk something and then one of the feet of the table rose in the air and everybody is taken aback and surprised and the mystery deepens as it were. Uh, and within the half darkness, there is an answer that, you know, the room has to be vacated, the house has to be vacated, and that the murderer is probably somebody, you see, this is what the ghost wants to tell, vacate the house or else harm. And who is the murderer? Tara, Tara, Tara. So obviously, there's an insinuation that Tara Shankar Babu is the murderer. Right. And then Momkesh wants to examine the hands of the people because he is a skeptic, right? So he, excuse me, but I would like to see your hands. And he's puzzled, but it is at this moment that Bomkesh knows because he has examined the fingerprints of all the five people there and it has more or less matched with that of uh, Shoilen Babu. So this is the moment when uh, Bomkesh knows the truth. Right, but he keeps on, uh, he keeps on, keeps it hidden because he does not want to reveal it to Shoshanko, who doubts his methods. Right, so uh, we've spent two or three days, and then Bomkesh says, "I, I knew it. I have known it all the while. I came to know that last Sunday." He says, "Your behavior suggested that the police do not wish for my assistance," and then. Uh, Shashanka Babu says that you please tell me who the murderer is and they like in the earlier story that we read lay a trap where they reach Koilash Babu's house which Bumkesh has asked him to abandon and it's so the house is empty and they lay a trap for the murderer the murderer comes uh, the ghost as it were enters into the house and uh, Ajit uh, we saw a tall, dark figure standing with his back to us, seeking something on the wall. And the dark figure examined the layer of lime with great concentration. Bonkish switches on his torch, and they jump on the ghost, 
the ghost tries to flee, bites Shoshanko Babu, and Bomkesh says, you will only suffer if you try to escape, Shailen Babu. Your stilts, the Ronpa, are no longer there. They have been removed by Constable Bhanu Pratap Singh and his associates. <laughs> right. And then, you know, Umkesh, uh, Shoilan Babu, once again, is like Onukul Babu in the earlier story. Very affable, normally very uh, docile. But at the moment of the crime, he is feral, he's violent. It is as if where somebody has taken off a mask from his face. Right. And then, of course, there is at the end, Bumkesh's story. This is the Todorovian story of the uh, unmasking of the crime. Right. I say it's only 17 minutes to go before I take the train. He says that, uh, you know, Ashoyle, uh, he, he says, uh, I, I was always a disbeliever when it came to ghosts and uh, spirits. He says, Ami, uh, I, I, Ami kichute yeta bishash korte uh, mm, Just give me a moment for here so that I can read to you uh, from the Bengali as as well, because this is important as a part of uh, the story. Uh, he says. Uh, Bhutan 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 uh, I'm not getting into the question about their existence. See, this is the difference between the detective and the ghost. Uh, in the sense that he, the detective is a materialist. I deal in material objects. I keep extra sensory matters out of my calculations. So the detective, one of the cardinal rules of the detective story is that the supernatural or the paranormal must be outside the realm of the detective story. Right. So he says, now let us assume that, you know, uh, the ghost is uh, a human being, right? So why does he want to frighten Koilash Babu? Logic, what is the question? Why does he want to frighten Koilash Babu? What is the obvious answer? That he wants Koilash Babu gone from the house, right? What is that motive? Why does he want Koilash Babu gone from the house? Because the jewels must be in the house. He hasn't taken them out. Therefore, where can those jewels be? The jewels must be in the wall, right? So where? And then how did he know about it? Because he had strangulated Moikun uh, Tobabu to death. So he must have extracted the truth from him, right? The other factor is Moikun Tobabu's daughter, as Bomkesh points out, and you can see on the screen, right? Two inconsistencies. She had heard nothing that night. Somebody had strangled her father, but she had not heard nothing. That was impossible. So she knew who had been to the house, but she was protecting this individual. Since the murdered person was her father, who is so dear to her whom she will protect? That is the husband. Secondly, she does not want to perform the rites at Goya. Because she knows that it is the ghost is not that of her father. She knows who the murderer is. She knows who the ghost is. Right. So there is no other explanation for a scarcely educated woman's refusing to perform her father's last rites. Right. Who is closer to a woman than even her father? An answer is unnecessary. This is the husband. I'd learned the first day that Boykunto Babu's daughter is chaste of character. Therefore, it could not have been anyone but her husband. Now, what was the profession of the husband? The husband was a circus player. Therefore, he knew how to walk on the stilts. He had come to the house that day, entered, strangled Boykunto Babu, known about the place where the jewels were hidden, but had to depart because of the commotion. He now wants to come back and take the jewels out. And that is why he 
poses as a ghost so that Koilash Babu is frightened and leaves the house. This is basically the story, right? And that the evidence that he had found, this bill is that of the circus and that he, the husband had actually written to Boykunto's daughter asking for money, right? So uh, this is the question. Now, who amongst the people around would be that circus player? And he suggests that it was Shoilen Babu. How do I know it was Shoilen Babu? Because I matched the fingerprints with the fingerprints I had seen at the time of the planchet, right? So, and that band, that bad was actually banned a fragment of the husband, right? So this is how Bonkesh, with the use of logic, dispels the ghost and therefore establishes the truth through rationality, right? Therefore, and he lays the trap for uh, the ghost that is Shoilin Babu, and Shoilin Babu comes into uh, the, the room and he is arrested. Right. And then comes a very important quote from Amullo, who was who has was almost believing in uh, in the stories of Boroda. Right. And Amullo says, ah, I'm relieved, Bachlum. Bumkesh Babu, you have extricated us from Boroda's ghosts. Uh, right. And of course, Boroda mumbles something. He says, Moktikam na gaje gaje. That is to say, if you do not find a diamond in one elephant, then it does not matter because it does not prove that the diamond does not exist. And then comes the scathing remark from Amullo Babu. I have never searched the head of an elephant, but all of us know perfectly well what lies in your head. Gajer mathai ki ache ta kakono tallash kori ni. Kitu tomar mathai ja ache ta amra shabai jan. So the assumption, the insinuation is that Bumkesh possesses grey matter and intelligence and therefore can dispel the ghost. Whereas Boroda Babu's head or brain is filled with speculation and foolish ideas of the ghost. So it is in this way that two narratives come here and in contact. One, that of the narrative of the detective story and the narrative of the ghost story. The ghost story is believed, uh, is predicated on unreason, paranormal and fear, mystery. Whereas the detectives is that of reason which must dispel both fear and mystery. So in this way, the colonial ghost story, as it were, sort of dispels the pre-colonial ghost story. It is the operation of a generic colonialism where a certain genre from the mainstream, from the mainland, is dispelling another genre from the colonized territory and you can see how you know uh, the the detective from the center kolkata omkish is dispelling the ghost of uh, the margins in munger in bihar and then momkish says of course i shall take your leave now i've said goodbye to tara shankar babu already he's a generous soul mohapran lok now the detective and the lawyer know each other and respect each other because both of them operate on the basis of logic. Therefore, why did I bring this story into your course of study? I just wanted to tell you, you know, how, you see, in Shottaneshi or the truth seeker, we've seen how the detective operates, how the detective creates his own story, which must explain whatever has happened earlier, how the story of the crime and the story of the explanation of the crime are both present in the detective story. But here, in this particular story, we have other stories, other genres being roped into the detective story. And the triumph of the detective is not only the triumph of the detective story of the ghost story, 
but a philosophical triumph over modern of modern reason over pre-modern unreason. Right? So if the detective story is a product of the enlightenment, then I would suggest that you see how this uh, how this triumph is narratively constituted by a writer who writes both detective stories and ghost stories. Now, having said that, I would like all of you to go back to a story called Shoilo Rahosho, right? Which is the mountain mystery, as it were. Shoilo is mountain, where uh, there is this story of two hotel owners. And one of these hotel owners is uh, murdered. And the assumption is, uh, and his body is eaten by a tiger in the forest below. And the assumption is, uh, and the widow of that man, supposedly dead, as uh, resides in Kolkata, and the man who has killed the husband has vanished. In reality, Bhumkesh will find out that the husband and the wife are living in that house, and they have murdered the, their erstwhile partner uh, and uh, created the illusion that uh, he had murdered them. Now, the clue that Bhumkesh finds of the house where these two people, the murderers, are living in Kolkata is on the basis of almost an extrasensory phenomenon that Bhumkesh can feel that someone is trying to tell him something and a scrap of paper comes and flies to him and he knows this address. So in that story, Charadindu is, as it were, using the paranormal as a kind of uh, an assistance for Bomkesh. This is a story that is beyond this, uh, this binary of the detective and the ghost story, where actually the ghost tries to aid the detective in finding out the truth. So what I'm trying to point out is the number of possible narratives or the number of possible ways in which the two narratives come, can come together. But in this particular story, at least, the two narratives are, as it were, binaries. This is not only Bumkesh o Boroda, Bumkesh and Boroda. This is also Bumkesh versus Boroda. And this is the detective versus the ghost seeker. This is the discourse of reason versus the discourse of unreason, the discourse of modern reason versus the discourse of pre-modern unreason. It is to show how these narratives interact in the detective story. In, a, in stories written by the same author who experiments with both genres, that I thought it would be an interesting experiment to read Bomkesh or Boroda. With that, these are the two stories that I had to discuss as part of the syllabus. The syllabus for the detective fiction for both the classes is now complete. In my next discussion, of course, I will uh, take a look at some of the questions that might be asked on the Bumke stories and discuss them. Right. It is with that I, I would like to stop sharing this uh, my screen. And I would bring this, this part of the lecture, at least, to a close by stopping the recording uh, date. Right. Uh, so